Okay, excellent. We are uh, live again. Uh, Welcome back for uh, the next lecture by Samir Suarez from uh, uh, the University of Padova, uh, who will uh, uh, talk about uh, community patterns in consumer resource models. Please, Samir. Okay, so first of all, thank you for the organizer. It's uh, really for me an opportunity to be here and to try to convey and to share with you um, some works that we have done in the past two years. So let me share the, screen, the slides. Okay, you should be able now to see slide, right? So the, this, uh, what I'm going to present is mainly um, the work done uh, um, by Leonardo in his PhD. I just got the PhD, you, you met Leonardo because he made uh, some tutorial for you. And uh, so these, I want uh, to thank you because uh, really a lot of works uh, he, he did from experiments to theory. So he, he did really a great, great and incredible uh, job. And then with uh, Andrea Giometto from Harvard, now uh, he moved uh, um, in another university and, uh, and Amos Maritan that you met in the first lectures. And of course, uh, to all the lab that uh, always in the discussion is are very important. So I want to start from the from the let's say fundamental questions. Uh, that is one of the uh, of the important question in ecology. So why we can observe so amazing biodiversity, and uh, I think you already uh, been exposed by these uh, questions uh, on the fact that. Uh, it's actually it's not so trivial to understand the, the incredible uh, diversity that, uh, that we observe in the natural ecosystem. This is uh, the, one of the most famous uh, uh, cases, the plankton. So in plankton, we have very few resources in the ocean, and yet we found thousands uh, of different species. And this is, uh, goes under the name of paradox of plankton, but this is in, in general the, this uh, more broad uh, questions about how it's possible to observe uh, uh, the, uh, so large number of species, coexisting species, even in the absence of uh, of, um, of many resources, and actually in the in the in the last years, and uh, again you will have the opportunity to to to, to hear uh, from Alvaro Sanchez uh, his great work on that. You can actually um, sample directly now from environment uh, um, DNA and uh, uh, analyze, uh, the, for example, the microbial diversity that you find in a very different uh, types of environment. Uh, and uh, again, you can cultivate uh, this, uh, this DNA in, uh, on, in the lab, so in a controlled experiment. And uh, again, uh, just using very few resources, even more resources, you observe uh, many species, uh, 20, 30, that can actually coexist for a long time. And this is surprising because in, in an in a ecological uh, fundamental setting, uh, in, uh, we understand that uh, the species uh, uh, that coexist should uh, somehow uh, uh, occupy a niche and that's uh, how species can coexist. So if you have like, you can do this experiment actually, uh, uh, you uh, take two species, uh, one, two microbial species, uh, one of the two is better, let's say, in uh, uptaking resources, so it's a, has a, fit, it's a higher fit in that environment. Uh, so what happens is that at the end, uh, if, you, if you wait long enough, then the, the fittest species, uh, the, the one with the highest growth rate, will invade the system and uh, will exclude the other species. That's why somehow we need an understanding of how it's possible that uh, so many species can coexist. Okay. Um, uh, let's say a way to study such problem is uh, in a theoretical uh, way. It's um, through the use of consumer resource models in, in particular, uh, one of the fundamental uh, achievement in theoretical ecology of course, for sure is, uh, is the model proposed by MacArthur in the 70s. Uh, so this model, as you can see, is a model of, uh, it's a system of a, of a couple differential equation. One for the species population, denoted by here by n, and, and of course uh, species grows, okay, and grows by consuming a resource, okay. So the resource uh, concentration here is given by the C, and uh, um, 
R is uh, simply uh, the resource uptake rate uh, and typically is considered as a monofunction. So it's a classic monofunction. Uh, so this, this term here, this alpha sigma i, represent uh, the metabolic strategies that is the metabolites that the species uh, uh, needs to uh, actually uptake uh, the resource from the environment. And uh, vi is the so-called resource values, that is the, the amount of energy that the, the bacteria can extract from, some, from, from such resources. So this overall part here uh, is what uh, uh, define the growth rate of the species. Why we have a death rate delta that here we consider uh, uh, dependent on the species. Uh, on the other hand, we have the resource concentration that grows. Uh, here uh, we are thinking of uh, abiotic resources and uh, SI represent a, a constant res uh, resource supply rate. Uh, of course, we have a minus uh, due to the fact that uh, this resource is used by the different species. And uh, we can have uh, also a degradation rate here denoted by mu. Okay, typically we will consider this mu equal to zero, but this is not, uh, I mean, we can do that without losing a general, um, uh, generalization of our result. Uh, uh, so in general, uh, you can see that alpha uh, somehow represents so a, a bipartite kind of networks that tell you which kind of uh, uh, metabolites uh, the species use to consume uh, uh, the resource I, okay? So if alpha sigma is zero, it means that the species sigma cannot uh, use, uh, cannot uh, uptake resource of the type I, okay? Okay, so through this model is uh, uh, easy to, um, to see, so these are the two equations, that we retrieve the so-called competition exclusion principle that I think you have already heard. That is to say, so consider the stationary states of these two uh, dynamics. So you can see that uh, putting zero, the first, the above equation here, we obtain such a condition, okay? And uh, uh, this condition, you can see these are M equation because we have M species. So sigma here goes from one to M. So we have M equation and we have a P variable, okay? Because this is a sum over uh, P alpha. So alpha uh, now are the variables. So we have M equation in P variable, but therefore if M, so if the number of species is greater than the number of resources, we have more equation than variable. And so there is no solution for the system. Uh, except in the general case. Uh, um, uh, otherwise, it, the system is solvable only if uh, M is smaller or greater than P. So if the number of species uh, can be only smaller or equal to the number of the resources. And this goes under the name of competition exclusion principle uh, that, uh, I mean, is, is a celebrated result that uh, still we have to fully understand. Okay, as an exercise, I uh, propose to you to show that uh, this uh, couple uh, set of equation, if uh, you use um, um, biotic resources instead of abiotic resources, that is to say instead of a, a constant supply rate, uh, you have a supply rate that follow a logistic equation, okay? Uh, and you consider a linear resource concentration, so RC just depends on C. Then in this case, in the quasi-stationary approximation, so if you put uh, the concentration dynamics to zero, and you look at the stationary state for the concentration. And once you do that, then you put back this uh, result into the population, uh, in the equation for the population, you can see that you will retrieve, uh, you will recover the generalized Lotka Volterra model. Okay, so the generalized Lotka Volterra model can be obtained as a special case in a quasi stationary approximation of the MacArthur model. Okay, so. Um, it's not possible to violate the competition inclusion principle, but uh, as pointed out recently, there is a, a very important uh, uh, physical constraint that we are missing. That is the amount of energy devoted to resource uptake cannot be unlimited, okay? And uh, in other words, uh, uh, there is a trade-off between the metabolic strategies. And this was pointed out by Post and Green, Green in, a, in a recent PRL. So um, species uh, has a total uh, budget of energy that can spend in a metabolic, uh, in producing metabolites basically. And uh, so there is a trade-off between the different strategies that can be turned on. And in the assumption of, uh, of this work, uh, E, 
uh, was equal for all the species and there is a, a hard bound. So this is actually the sum over all the metabolic strategies should be equal to this energy E. And they showed that uh, in this case, the coexistence of more species down resources is possible in some, and I will show fine-tuned conditions, okay? What are these conditions? Well, um, again, these are our consumer resource equation. And again, you can uh, um, compute the stationary states. So a first assumption of that work was that the, the, the death rate was species independent. Typically, they are very small. So from this condition, you can see that a solution for R star is, uh, uh, is the following, okay? So you can, you can find a solution that is a function of the total energy budget. Then if you put back now R star in the second equation here, so again, you look at the stationarity. So you have the supply rate is equal to the sum and you put the solution of R star. Then you can see that the species, all species can coexist independently on the number of resources if such a condition is met, okay? So this is a condition that once we introduce the uh, energy budget, uh, if this is satisfied, then we have coexistence of more, uh, we can have coexistence of more species than resources. Then if you rescale all the quantities, so we call X the rescaled population, S hat the rescaled supply vector, Okay, I pointed out here that with this tilde here, I denote the fact that I have absorbed the, the, this uh, Y, this efficiency. But okay, S hat is the scale supply rate and we rescaled the metabolic strategy so that all these quantities uh, sum, to, uh, uh, sum up to one. Then uh, you can see that this uh, uh, define uh, uh, basically a multidimensional simplex and in particular, all the, uh, the strategies and the supply rates light in this P minus one, okay, dimensional simplex, okay? So uh, you can represent it geometrically the solution of uh, the consumer resource model with the total uh, energy budget. And in this, uh, I represent here the, the resources. So these are the axis for the resources and all the metabolic strategies of the species and the supply rate lie on this, uh, uh, P minus one dimensional simplex. So in general, we will consider P equal three, so three resources, so that the space in which the metabolic strategy and the supply rate lives are, is a two dimensional simplex. And so we can visualize it very clearly. So uh, let's now see uh, what, what, the, what does it mean that this condition for coexistence is satisfied, okay? So in fact, we can have a, a geometrical interpretation that uh, uh, allow us to understand when the, the sum, uh, the sum here is, uh, is actually satisfied. So after the scaling, I said, this can be represented in, in, in this uh, simplex. And uh, so now I consider the points, the colored points represent the strategies. So red species, it's only nutrient two, because you can see this is only in, in the vertex of, uh, of, of, the, of the resource number two, okay, blue, fits equally upon the blue species fits equally upon species one and species two uh, while the uh, species uh, the, the violet and the orange species um, can uh, feed on all resources okay the star is a supply rate so the, there is a supply rate that is actually um, have a component that is different from zero in all uh, the different, all the, the three resources, okay? So the, these conditions imply that the supply rate must lie inside the convex hull uh, composed by the metabolic strategies. That is to say, if you, okay, now I'm not, not so good to, to build the convex hull, but this, uh, this region is the convex hull, that is to say the region where you have, as you limit it, limited by all the metabolic strategies, the star, the supply rate, in order to satisfy to this condition, must lie inside this convex hull. So in this case, the star, the supply rate, is outside the convex hull. And therefore, you will have extinction and the competition exclusion uh, will be satisfied again. So in this case, only at 
best three species, typically less, will coexist. So there will be at least one extinction in this case, and the com competition exclusion principle is recovered. If instead the supply rate lie inside the convex hull, and then this condition is satisfied, and in fact, we have the coexistence of all the four species, okay? So the total energy budget is a fundamental and important and physical ingredient to understand and to allow species to exist. At the same time, we must say that in this condition, uh, in this case, uh, if uh, we put a soft bound or if uh, we uh, uh, just perturb a little bit, for example, the budget based on uh, the energy budget uh, depending on the species, uh, we will uh, retrieve again, we will uh, retrieve again the competition exclusion principle. So in somehow this is a condition, it is a fine tuning condition. So of course, in general, we understand a very important uh, factors that is this total energy budget, but still uh, we want to better understand how can species coexist or at least how can species uh, organize uh, to coexist so that uh, they, so they can uh, actually survive even in the presence of your resources. Okay, so now another uh, uh, apparently unrelated aspect is uh, the observation, this is an experimental observation, uh, actually that, date backs, uh, that dates back from uh, Monod in 1949 in his PhD thesis, that uh, the growth of, uh, of uh, microbial species in presence of uh, more than one resources uh, actually display the so-called the oxy shift. What is the oxy shift? The oxy shift is uh, the fact that you have, you see there are different slope in the growth of the species and that's because uh, basically uh, the species uh, um, in the presence of, uh, for example, two resources, first use his best, his favorable resources. And then once he has consumed all that resources, then there is a shift in his metabolic strategy. So basically he turn off some, uh, some uh, uh, metabolites and turn off the other one. So to start to uh, feed on the second resources. And this leads to this uh, uh, bump and this different uh, regime in the, in, the, in the growth rate. So this is a very strong, and in fact, then uh, there are, uh, of course, a lot of evidence uh, since Mono in 1949 that uh, uh, the strategies of, of the, uh, the metabolic strategies in bacteria are not fixed in time, but they change in time. Okay, so this is a very fundamental ingredient that we are losing uh, we are not considering in consumer resource models typically. So they are far not constant, but are function of time, okay? So that's what uh, we have done basically. So we wanted to uh, in consider in the MacArthur's consumer resource model, uh, metabolic strategies that evolve in time. So this means to write an equation for uh, uh, for uh, the, the metabolic strategies, okay? So how, how to, to, to write such, uh, such equation? Well, we, we used a simple idea, maybe the, the most simple idea, that is to use an adaptive framework so that each species changes its metabolic strategies in order to increase its own growth rate, okay? So this is, uh, um, uh, in a way, uh, 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 the possibility that the species can adapt to the, to the environment uh, and select which kind of, uh, of metabolic strategies you want to use. So again, if this is the growth rate, the adaptation, so the, the, the equation for, uh, for the metabolic strategies is uh, simply, in a, in a simple way, the, the gradient of, of the growth rate. So this, in this way, we optimize uh, the, the, the growth rate. And uh, one over uh, tau or lambda denotes the velocity of this adaptation. Okay, then we will see how this is related with the parameter d. But so now we are increased. We, so we have a species dependent um, adaptation velocity. Okay, so this is now the, our new equation. So we want uh, uh, to optimize, uh, of course, the metabolic strategies, but it's clear now we need to put a bound. Okay, because again, there is no possibility of. Uh, devote an unbounded amount of energy. And if you just increase uh, this uh, alpha dot, you will have a, a, a indifferent increase. Well, we put a, a soft bound on, uh, on a species dependent soft bound on the, on, the, on the energy that can be used to produce uh, metabolic, stra uh, metabolic strategies. And so now we have to perform such optimization constraints. 
So it's possible these are uh, uh, a general result. If you have to do optimization uh, with some constraint, you can implement so the constraint in in the equation. So the idea here, okay, here you can see there are. Uh, so this is a, a, a the phase space of just the two uh, two resources. So we have a fifth uh, alpha sigma one and alpha sigma two, and uh, this line uh, the e star sigma divides the plane in two region. One that is the pre, the allowed uh, region. We can move inside this uh, this uh, half plane because here uh, the uh, energy is less than the E sigma star. While we are not uh, allowed to to cross such uh, such a line, we are not moving the, in the other plane. And to do that, what we do is that during the the optimization, so while performing the gradient, we remove basically the perpendicular. Um, uh, components of the gradient that is parallel to the gradient of the uh, of the energy okay so in this sense we have to to perform this uh, evolution by removing all the time these components so that it, uh, it this uh, will allow to not always to move at, at, at best in, along the tangent of this curve okay so if you do that this is a, a i mean this is just to perform this calculation it's not so easy and also not allowing the energy to be too negative, the metabolic strategy not to be negative, you end up with the, the, these two uh, conditions become this equation here, okay? So now we have an equation for the metabolic strategies and in this equation is also contained the constraint on the, uh, on the, meta on the metabolic budget, on the metabolic trade-off. So these are the new equation of the consumer resource model with adaptation. So you can see we have the equation for the population, the equation for uh, the concentration, and our equation for the, the uh, metabolic strategies. Okay, so now let's see what uh, we obtain, uh, what this uh, model uh, with adaptation can, uh, can display, what kind of behavior. First of all, okay, so in the red line, it's a simple simulation of the model and uh, in, a, in a kind of general setting with general param parameterization. Uh, and you can see that indeed, okay, so this is the, 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 the model, this is our, the, the, the data that I showed before. And actually using meta adaptive metabolic strategies allow to, to reproduce the oxy shift in the growth curve, okay? So here, if we think that there is a, a strong preference on our resources, or we can think that we can turn it off and on to metabolic strategies, we indeed observe uh, this kind of behavior, this the oxy shift. And I stress here that we are completely neglecting the particular molecular mechanism of the, of the species metabolism. Uh, but simply we are, uh, for example, uh, putting a strong preference on one of the two resources, okay? With the parameter VI. Uh, but this is not only qualitative. Okay, so uh, actually Leonardo, together with, uh, with Andrea, they performed an experiment. So an experiment where they have a cerevisia that uh, eats glu glu galactose, and then as a, as a waste, uh, it produces ethanol. And, uh, and uh, in once a gal galactose is depleted, the cerevisia eats uh, the, so feed on uh, the, the, the wasted ethanol. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, first it grows on galactose, then it grows on ethanol, and you can see these, these are eight replicas of the, of the experiments in the growth, so you can actually see very well this, uh, this deoxy shift, okay? Now, if we try to, to describe to, 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 uh, this uh, behavior with, uh, with the, the model, with the consumer resource model, so uh, this is uh, the best fit, uh, okay, using Monte Carlo uh, chain methods, of the model with adaptive on the left on the left and with the fixed metabolic strategies of course here we have to constrain so we can measure some um, parameter of the model independently from the uh, and we know from the biology that we have constraint on, on the parameters let's say and given such constraints we we perform this uh, this best fit of the model and you can see that as expected the, the consumer resource model without metabolic uh, adaptation uh, follow a, a, a simple and uh, uh, let's say with the one slope uh, growth curve. While with the adaptive strategies, you really can see that we can quantitatively describe the, the experimental data. Okay, now let me 
uh, make a link, uh, an a, a interesting link, this is a suggestion rather than a proof, with the metabolic theory of ecology. Okay, so the metabolic theory of ecology is a fascinating topic. I think that Amos told you something about that. And uh, you can, uh, uh, I mean, one of the most celebrated equation describing this metabolic theory of ecology is the so-called the Kleiber law that describes the relation between the mass of species and their uh, uh, metabolic rate B, okay? And indeed over several order of magnitudes, you have that uh, such relation is a power law with exponent three, three, uh, uh, three over four. Now, is discussed about this exponent. Uh, of course, this is just averages uh, relationship. So these are average mass and average uh, metabolic rate, but this is quite a strong evidence in many, in many different fields uh, of the existence of such uh, uh, metabolic rate. That is the fundamental rate that govern many patterns in, bio in biology. So if we assume that uh, Kleiber laws holds, uh, then uh, in our equation, our, in our uh, in our physics of, of by physics of the model, we have a different rate, one given for the death rate, another one given by the adaptation velocity, another given by the rate of uh, metabolic production. Well, all these rates will depend on the Kleiber law, and so finally will depend on the on the biomass, on the mass of the of the of the species. Indeed, it's easy. I mean, we, it can be shown that if we assume that the the metabolic theory of ecology holds then um, we have that both the total energy budget and the death rate scale as the biomass to the minus one over fourth, okay? Now, uh, in this condition, uh, what uh, we have as a consequence is that the ratio between the energy budget and the death rate is species independent, okay? And uh, also uh, we have that the death rate, uh, uh, I mean, the, 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 um, the adaptation velocity can be written as a function of the death rate, okay? So th this uh, leads everything to one, only one characteristic type of scale, okay? So this is not uh, mandatory, okay? Uh, we can uh, relax this hypothesis and uh, if you want, uh, I can, uh, in, in the question, you can ask me what happened if we relax this hypothesis. But uh, uh, now we are assuming this hypothesis. So we are considering in the following that uh, the ratio between the total energy budget and the rate rate is a species independent. Okay, so again, now uh, we can write for our model a condition for coexistence. And uh, in fact, uh, we have that in this case, uh, all species survive uh, again. So these are just different uh, little mathematical details. But the, the final point is that, again, the supply rate, the scale supply rate, must be inside the convex hull uh, of the metabolic strategies, okay? So uh, different uh, uh, derivation, but the same result. Uh, <clears throat> so now the point is that now the alpha depends on time, okay? So here I forgot to, to explicitly make a, 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 a time dependence here of, of the of the, of the, so let me, let me do it uh, just to stress this point. So basically here, this alpha, okay, here the alpha uh, are, ooh, courageous. Okay, let me see if I can do it. Depends on time now, okay? And, uh, okay, so now if, uh, uh, so now this is the initial condition, for example, okay? So after rescaling, we set the initial condition, alpha t equal to zero, and the supply rate is outside the convex hull, okay? So we have four species, three resources, same condition as before, and the supply rate is outside the convex hull. So the question is, what about species coexistence, okay? So I remember to you that in the case of fixed, static metabolic strategies, then in this case, if the convex hull, if the supply rate is outside the convex hull, then you can, as you can see, we have extinction of many species and only two in this case survive and CHAP is recovered. The competition institution principle is recovered. Let's see what happens now if we allow 
this maximization of growth rate constrained by total energy budget in our equation. Okay, so this is what happened. It happened that there is a dynamics of the metabolic strategies along this simplex. And finally, you have that all metabolic strategies uh, self-organized in a way that the supply rate now is in at the stationary condition is inside the convex hull. And in fact, as you can see, all the species survive. As you can see, the, the wild species is the closest one, is the most abundant one. But it's not trivial because, for example, you can see that uh, this is not, uh, I mean, the, the orange one is not the, 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 is not the closest. So, I mean, it, it's not uh, uh, trivial to, to find uh, um, in, based on the position of the metabolic strategies, the, the, the abundance of the species. These are open a problem as far as, as, as I know. But uh, um, we can see that the strategy is self-organized and coexistent is allowed. Okay, so we can now look at the other, other, other uh, um, experiment. For example, you can think about uh, perturbing the environment so that the supply rate now is uh, the star uh, for, a, for a given time. And then you turn it off and you turn it on a new supply rate, like having different kind of uh, source of resources from the environment and you change it, okay? And in the case of fixed metabolic strategies, of course, this uh, leads to a stress of the population dynamics that you see they start to oscillate larger and larger until most of them will reach extinction. And only a few of them, actually, if you wait long enough, maybe none of them will survive. Okay, so let's see what happened in the same condition for adaptive strategies. Okay, so what you see is that uh, uh, adaptive strategies increase the community resilience and so stabilize the population dynamics of our microbial community that is able somehow to follow, to adapt to this external environment, okay? So we have done a lot of different tests. So for example, what happened in the presence of uh, uh, resources that are heavily degraded or uh, what happened in the presence of very inefficient resources. And all the time you see that they just uh, Implementing this optimization principle with constraints, the community is self-organized so to have the best response to the kind of perturbation you implement to the community. So this was very cool. Okay, so uh, finally, one can say, okay, but uh, so here we have a new paradox. Everybody always survive, okay? Well, the answer is this is not true in the sense that it depends on the velocity of the adaptation and on the velocity of the perturbation. That is to say that, so here I, we are we plotted the, long, the rank abundance curve. So this is the, the log of the stationary abundance of a community of 20 species and three resources for different uh, adaptation velocity and also for uh, no adaptation at all. So in a, for no adaptation at all, of course, you recover check. Okay, so you only have three species survive. But you see, you turn on down a little, the, a little adaptation, then, uh, more species survive, but not all the species survive, only six. If you now increase the adaptation, around 13 species survive. And then if you increase again the adaptation velocity, then all the species survive. So the adaptation velocity is a, a fundamental control parameter in controlling the, the observed biodiversity of the system. Okay, so let's, uh, let's uh, first make our first uh, part of uh, my conclusion of, my, of uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, we have introduced adaptive, adaptive metabolic strategies that maximize the species growth rate. And we have we observed that this allows to, to describe the oxygen shift growth pattern. And uh, moreover, that this uh, adaptation drive self-organization of species toward the coexistent pattern. Uh, and also that metabolic adaptation increase stability of the ecological community against environmental perturbation. Okay. Finally, we have seen that adaptation velocity is the parameter controlling the actual number of species that will coexist at stationarity. Okay, so this is the first, uh, the first uh, uh, conclusion that I hope uh, uh, you have. Uh, uh, if there are questions about this first part, maybe we can uh, take it now. Yeah, there's a question in the chat. Can you read it? Yes, how would one design experiments to test the uh, adaptive uh, strategies prediction. Uh, okay, so for, okay, 
uh, our first test was uh, that we do, we have done was uh, to 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 perform the experiment about uh, uh, try to describe the oxy shift. Okay, so in this case, uh, I mean this is maybe I mean it's not a prediction in the sense that we know that we observed. Uh, uh, the oxy shift, but uh, uh, if you wish, you can uh, actually see. One experiment to test the strategy uh, about uh, adaptive strategy prediction would be to be able to cultivate a microbial uh, community with species, uh, maybe engineered species, characterized by different uh, adaptation velocity, or you, you, you actually force some, uh, some uh, inefficiency in some species. And actually, what you, what you would expect is that uh, uh, being uh, less efficient in adaptation uh, and uh, somehow measuring this uh, velocity adaptation, you can actually test uh, um, that uh, uh, which species survive and which not. We have done a kind of similar experiment and I will present in the second part. But of course, I mean, you, you may think of many experiments. That's what we are doing right now. So I'm not an experimentalist. I don't want to speak uh, uh, out of, uh, of uh, rigor, but uh, yes, we, you, you can actually do, uh, I think, many experiments to test this, uh, this prediction. So second question was, uh, would you say that this model solve uh, the plankton paradox? Well, okay, S uh, saying definitive words about the science is always, uh, I mean, uh, too, too demanding. So I would not say that solve the paradox of the plankton. I would say that suggest, uh, strongly suggest, if you wish, that, uh, I mean, uh, quantitatively suggest that adaptation is a very important mechanism for species, at least the microbial species, to exist. Yes, in this regard, I would say yes. Uh, we, we, what, what I think we have understood is that uh, dynamic, I mean, having adaptation is a fundamental ingredient for having a high biodiversity even in the presence of your resources. Okay, if it's not the only explanation, is not probably the only contribution to, 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 to the solution of the paradox, but for sure is one, one, one part, one important part of that. Okay, so if not, I go to the second part. I hope to, to be able to, to be on time. There's a... Ah, I don't see it, sorry. No question. I didn't see. Uh, can you read it? I don't see you. The chat it disappeared. I don't know Have you it. checked whether these results are robust to noise? Uh, to noise in 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 where? So yes, we, we have checked that this result are robust to noise. Depends where you where you put in the noise. So I will uh, at the end uh, maybe remind me this question. I will show you that. Uh, if you perturb the, the condition, so if you put the noise in the ratio between the energy budget and the debt rate, so if you allow the ratio of the energy budget and the debt rate uh, to uh, not to be species dependent, so in this case it's not fixed to a constant, but may vary, like uh, also, I mean, you, like you, you, you consider a variance, then in this case, this lead in the long time to competition exclusion. So as soon as uh, that condition is, uh, is not observed, if you look, if you wait long enough, you will obtain uh, competition exclusion. But this will uh, occur in a uh, 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 time scale of the order of 10 to the 8, 10 to the 9, depends on the variance. Okay, so this is an important point. The effect of the noise is like when you when you go from deterministic to, to, to you add the noise to, I mean, you have absorbing the state, of course. In the deterministic case, maybe you are stable. Uh, in the in the stochastic case, if you have that you you pass the barrier, but maybe in exponential time. Okay, so in this sense, it's robust to noise. Of course, we have you have a uh, quantitatively different result. Are there any other questions? Uh, what happens if some resources are not substitutable? Uh, what does it mean? I would love to answer, but I have to ask uh, okay. Sylvia to... You can unmute yeah. and uh, ask. Yeah, Sylvia, so, can I... My question, I was thinking, like, okay, we heard uh, the other day um, from James O'Dwyer of non-substitutable resource, non resources. It means that, like, one... Uh, 
species, for example, plankton, it needs nitrogen. So the adaptation of its strategy, I mean, it can adapt strategies, but uh, still these resources is, is needed. It, it, mm -hmm. it cannot uh, stop using nitrogen. So could you, uh, like, did you think well, what will happen to the model if uh, this happens? Well, I think that this is in the model would uh, would means that I mean this is not incorporated in the model, so I I I, I don't know. In the sense that from one side you can uh, think that uh, there is some metabolic strategies, some alpha sigma i. So if i is nitrogen, this must always be greater than zero. So you put constraint on the entries of this metabolic uh, matrix. But how to put uh, this non substitutable resources in the growth rate? This is not uh, I mean this is not I didn't think about. Okay, so this is not trivial. So you can constrain the model to use, if you wish, some resources, but I don't, I, in this model, in this moment, there is no, I mean, preferential use of one of resources. So there is a, no this possibility to constrain the use of one resources. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I ask you a question here? Yes. Or, oh, sure, thank you. Uh, so my, my question is about the, the, the assumption of the growth rate maximization. I, I mean, uh, think about a community with, um, you know, consists of the two species that has uh, obligate uh, interdependence, like, um, you know, uh, amino acid octo. Um So how, how, how does in that case that your model need to be, you know, changed or, you know, added a term to, to account for um, the cases, you know, the, the mutualism and, and the not, not the species want to optimize its own, but the, the whole community. Okay, yes, this is not, a, this is a good, good point. I mean, uh, this is a really uh, something that we are doing now. Um, we are not considering any kind of cooperation. And so uh, any kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, for example, uh, cross feeding type of, uh, of effect. For sure, this uh, will have uh, an important uh, effect also on, on, uh, on the possibility to coexist. So that's why I said before that this is not the only mechanism, okay? This is not that, uh, I mean, with that we can explain everything. Uh, it's, uh, this is, right now, it's, uh, it's just adaptation in a, comp in a poor competitive uh, uh, communities, but for sure in the same framework, actually, you, you could, and we are doing, we want uh, adding also cross-feeding and other cooperative uh, mechanisms. Okay, so I'm, I'm just reading the, there is a, a consider you now two questions about uh, physiological uh, adaptation is physiological genetic changes or, uh, so let me just go to the second part because I think that this is uh, enlightening on this second part of the question. In fact, my second uh, aspect is bridging, try to bridge, we try to bridge the cellular and the ecological scale. Because, in fact, there are evidence that uh, the abundance of microbial species is strongly correlated with the metabolic function, so that you can actually predict uh, community composition by assembling uh, microbial species in metabolic blocks uh, that are specialized in particular metabolic function. And uh, we have already seen that the metabolic adaptation is very important in, 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 in determining the, 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 the evolution of the population. So, what we want to understand is the function is, of course, the function performed by a species depends on the protein it is producing. And so the balance between the function, that is the metabolic trade-off, depends on how the proteome of species is allocated. So now we would try to try to understand what's the origin of the metabolic budget and of the adaptation of the fact that this strategy is evolving time. Okay. So how does allocation of the proteome affect the dynamics of microbial community? So we take a step in a, in a, in a smaller scale and we look at, so uh, we consider a species and we consider the, the complexity of its proteome, that is the, the, all the proteins that can be produced by that species. And uh, it's known that uh, the total proteome can be divided into three, uh, let's say, uh, la, uh, three um, important uh, uh, functions or regions uh, so they, that are denoted by Q, P, and R. So uh, all the proteome dedicated to housekeeping function, such as the transcription factors, are the phi, are, are the phi Q. So phi Q is the fraction of uh, the proteome allocated for housekeeping function. And typically this is uh, hard-cored, so this cannot be 
So it's fixed. This cannot change in time because these are the minimal condition for, uh, for, for the for bacteria to work, okay? Then we have two other regions, two other uh, uh, families. One is the uh, proteome allocated for nutrient uptake and the metabolism. That is the one related to our case. And we call this with, by 5P. And then there is uh, the uh, allocation of proteome for biomass synthesis, that are ribosomes mainly, okay? Now, 5P and 5R, uh, as I will show, can vary, but are in, tra in a trade-off, okay? And uh, this uh, important relation between this different uh, protein allocation and the growth rate, so this interdependence of cell growth and gene expression is a, a very seminal work uh, of a uh, seminal work, important work of uh, the group of Terence Wa that was published in Science in 2010. So in this work, uh, they found phenomenological law, okay, that described the relation between the Protein allocation, for example, here of the R sector and the growth rate of the species G. Okay, so uh, in this case, you can see that, so these are data from the experiment. In the y axis, this is basically a proxy for this protein allocation for, uh, for, the, uh, for the R sector R. Phi zero, you see, is the basically hardcore. So this is the mean, uh, you cannot devote less than phi zero because these are needed to live. Okay, so it's a compressible part of the phi R. And then you can see that uh, increasing the, the amount of, uh, of, uh, of uh, protein dedicated to this sector, you increase the growth rate. Okay, so it's an in, in a linear relation. Okay, uh, KT is uh, basically a measure of uh, translational capacity. So how fast the microbial species uh, express its genome, while rho is just a conversion factor. Okay, so this is not, uh, these are details. On the other way, also for the protein allocated in the P fraction, so the one of the metabolite, of the, for the metabolites, also this is in a linear relation with the, with the growth rate, okay? So these are the two phenomenological law that they observed. It can be synthesized in this way. So we have that the fraction of protein dedicated to the uh, nutrient uptake is proportional to the growth rate. The similar is for the uh, R sectors. Uh, that is proportional to the growth rate, while the, uh, the, the housekeeping function is, uh, is uncompressible, is constant. And we have this condition, of course, the fraction, the total fraction should be one, okay? So what we have done uh, is to generalize first the, these phenomenological laws for N res NR resources and NP species, okay? So now we have NR resources, NP species. And what we consider is that the P sector is subdivided, okay, uh, uh, for the different resources, okay? So phi sigma P1 is the metabolites, is the proteome allocated to uptake resource of type one. Phi sigma 2P is the proteome allocated to uptake resource two and so on, okay? Okay, so in this case, we just generalize uh, the, the, the basically the same definition, but considering the growth rate contribution due to the resource I, this is this G sigma I, okay? So because we are focused on the, on the, on the protein dedicated to the P sector, we will, uh, for simplicity, just uh, uh, denote this by phi. So when I, there is no uh, superscript, superscript, this is of the P sector, okay? So, an important assumption that we are doing is that the sum of the different contribution of, of the growth rate of the different resources uh, uh, is uh, basically, this is the, the sum gives the total growth rate, okay? So the total growth rate is simply the sum of the growth rate contribution for each single resources. And if you do this and you put this condition in this uh, constraint, uh, the normalization constraint, you go, you obtain uh, this condition for the, uh, for the proteome uh, allocation for uh, species sigma to all the resources I, okay, here. And you can see that this sum, this is constrained by this capital phi, okay? So this capital phi is the total proteome that can be allocated for the P sector, basically, for growth, for, for, for resource uptake, okay? So this is just come from this uh, one phenomenological law. So now the model is quite easy to generalize in this sense because we have that, uh, okay, for each resources, we can have a proteome allocation phi sigma one, 
that will be proportional to the uptake rate of the species. And again, and in, in turn, this uptake rate uh, will contribute to the growth rate of species one following the, uh, the, the laws that I just showed, okay? And the total growth rate will be just the sum of uh, the different uptake rate for all the different resources. And then we have a maintenance cost that is called by Q that is similar to the death rate. Okay, so the new equation are simply this coupled equation here. So it's the same as before, but now G sigma directly depends on the proton allocation of the species. So this is explicitly all the, all the equation. So, so now we go a little bit quick because uh, I have uh, uh, not much time. But I want to stress that this is really similar structure of the equation that I before presented. The, the change, this, now we have a, actually a, a more microscopic understanding of the different parameters, okay? Uh, because we are working at the, at the cellular scale. And also the new, the, there is the new constraint the totally budget allocation uh, now takes just the form of this protein allocation constraint. Okay. And very interestingly, you see that this uh, protein allocation for the P sector is fixed, but this is equal to this left part, this is the third equation. And actually you can see that because R changing time, also phi must be variable. So you see that the protein allocation for growth, so for, for these metabolic uh, strategies must be dependent on time. So we don't have to suppose it, we just uh, came out from this uh, cellular description of the protein allocation. So at this point, uh, this is just, uh, should be, so if uh, the, uh, the, this phi must be variable, then we need to write some dynamic, dynamic uh, uh, equation for the phi that will correspond to the metabolic, dynamic metabolic strategies. And again, we have an optimization of the growth rate, but with these new constraints, okay? so. The mathematics is the same as before, so I'm not going uh, to too, too much detail, but you just need to optimize it through the gradient uh, by imposing the constraint that is given by this equation. And then you end up with this final equation here that is the same as before for the alpha, okay? But now the phi are the protein uh, allocated for the P sector. So again, you can study the result of condition. You can look at the stationary solution of the system Okay, these are the stationary solution of the system. From this, you find that uh, one solution is given by this R star. And again, you can call the ratio, that ratio there uh, with the capital um, theta. And then you have that the R star, you can write R star in this way. And then you can actually the, 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 the constraint, the constraint, the biological constraint now, I mean, this is a constraint that has a biological meaning, is that uh, you can see the maintenance cost is proportional to the proteome allocation, total proteome allocation of the P sector. And in this sense, if phi, if phi sigma increases, we have to spend more energy to synthesize catalytic, catalytic and ribosomal protein, and therefore the maintenance cost uh, increases. Okay, so this makes sense. And uh, this is just a condition. So this condition must be fulfilled for the equation, for the stationary solution to make sense. So if this is not fulfilled, you don't have the stationary solution out there. This is not enough for having coexistence. For having coexistence, again, you do the similar as before. You are scaling M, S, and phi, and you obtain again that species coexist if the supply vector is within the convex hull, okay? Uh, and now, Phi is the protein at the stationarity. Phi star is the protein allocation of stationarity of the species I to resource, to the species sigma to resource I. So again, now you can see, now you have the understood, I hope. Uh, we start with a given initial protein allocation. In the fixed case, uh, you, if the supply vector is outside the convex hull, you would have uh, extinction, but now protein allocation change so that the new metabolic strategies are, uh, uh, are uh, uh, the supply vector is within the convex hull and you find, uh, and you find uh, coexistence. So this is what I was mentioning. Leonardo used two engineering strains of E. coli and completed them with one common resources. And one of the strain was engineered so to, we can change the protein allocation experimentally and uh, we can evaluate the outcome of the competition as we do so. And in fact, we predict the outcome of the competition in this case. Okay, so you can really do experiment 
engineering the protein allocation of species and, 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 and trying to predict the outcome of the competition. And again, you can see that uh, uh, the, 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 the velocity of the adaptation is again a fundamental parameter. If uh, the, as you can see here, this is uh, the condition where the velocity, where the adaptation velocity is high, so the species can uh, adapt and coexist. All the species can coexist. In this case, adaptation velocity is uh, is low, and in fact, you can have. Uh, in this case, you, 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 you don't observe coexistence, okay? So in this case, you can see if epsilon uh, is, uh, is large enough, you start to have extinction. That is to say, if uh, adaptation is low enough, you start to observe adaptation. So depending on, on, on the adaptation velocity, again, we have, we have a coexistence or not. I wanted to highlight, uh, I'm, 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 I'm going very few slides and, and I concluded. Um, because this, I, uh, I, there was a previous talk that was mentioning this. So depending on, on the amount of, of, of supply rate, even if adaptation is low, but if supply rate is very strong, then we can have a species to coexist. So if we have a strong influx of, of resources, then you have that in this case, more species than resources can coexist. For example, here you can see that uh, if uh, the supply rate uh, is uh, small, uh, the adaptation velocity is not enough, and so only two species coexist. We, are, we have always three resources, so only the yellow and the, and the blue species coexist. But now if we increase two times uh, the, the, the supply rate, uh, yet uh, only two species coexist additionality, but the extinction take more, much more time. And then if we instead increase five times the supply rate, then you see that all the species now start to coexist, okay? So also this, the amount, the, the magnitude of the supply rate is an important control parameter for coexistence in this case. So the conclusion of uh, this part and the overall talk is that including problem, including problem allocation models of competitive communities give us new insight on the, on the dynamics of, of bacterial communities and the relationship between a protein allocation and population dynamics seems relevant to understand the origin of the high level of biodiversity. So here we have like a microscopic, uh, let's say, uh, explanation or not explanation, microscopic ingredient, microscopic process that have an impact on the, on the, on the macroscopic coexisting pattern of the community. So it's just a starting point. But it's a starting point that bridge physiology of microbes to community ecology. So we are very excited about this, and because we think that this is really an opportunity, because basically all the questions that probably you will will ask now are open questions, because this was just really done in in the few in the last few months. And but this consumer protein resource model suggests that coexistence. Can, could be reached by self-organization adjustment of cellular proteins of this of the species itself. Okay, and with that, with that, I take uh, for the remaining time questions. And I want to thanks, of course, all the collaboration. Again, especially, uh, I really want to thank Leonardo for his great uh, work. And these are the two references of the, what I have presented. One is already published in PLOS Computational Biology, and one was just accepted like a week ago in the ISME journal, so it will be available soon in the ISME, but you can find the work in the bioarchive. So thank you very much. Thank you, Samir. So we can uh, start accepting questions. Uh, there's one in the chat if you want to. Yes, so now I can uh, uh, look at the chat. Okay. Can adaptation velocity uh, be interpreted as the lag phase to change the metabolic machinery? This is a very, very interesting question. And actually, this is one of the key missing uh, uh, aspects. So because we know, I mean, uh, not an expert of this, but we have a, a whole uh, machinery to, to model uh, metabolic fluxes. Uh, uh, so the metabolic networks, uh, to metabolic networks, so it would be very in in interesting. But yes, uh, I mean, I don't have a quantitative answer to this, but uh, for sure, uh, qualitatively, adaptation velocity must depend on on uh, on, uh, on the lag phase to change the metabolic machinery. And 
sorry, uh, can I add something? So I made this question. I'm Martina. Hi. Yes. Uh, so do you think that uh, this could originate trade-offs? Like, uh, so let's say that one species is faster and another species is lower, and this could, uh, let's say, uh, change the outcome of the final composition because of these differences in the velocity of, of adaptation? Absolutely, yes. This is the understand. This is the overall understanding. So all the time that we observe the coexistence, basically we see that there are trade-offs in place. And this is the main, uh, let's say, attempt that we are doing. In order to understand this trade-off, we think that we need to go at the cellular scale, for example, at the protein allocation, but also, for example, this is a very uh, good uh, path to look at different uh, 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 lag phases in the metabolic machinery and understanding in this way the emergent trade-off between species and, uh, and so to understand uh, basically th that this uh, trade-off emerging from the, from the cellular and, and the metabolic scale will have a, far, a strong impact on the species coexistence. This is exactly the, the point. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I have, uh, <clears throat> I have a related question. Um, so, uh, I mean, related to, to, to the adaptation velocity, but, but, um, I mean, is there a way that we can quantify the you know, adaptation velocity by comparing it with the data? So I think that's important because, um, you know, by quantifying the velocity, we know, you know, if it's under out of the magnitude of the days or weeks or, you know, hours, then we can know if that adaptation in the mathematical model uh, actually reflect the physiological change without the mutations or on the, you know, more longer evolutionary, you know, uh, time scale with a lot of mutations. I mean, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I can offer a thought. Uh, again, I'm really, I'm really not the guy going to the lab, so I might uh, say, so I don't know if Leonardo is connected and want to, to correct me or suggest something, but my, my, I think that uh, my understanding is, is a way to, 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 to test adaptation velocity can, can actually be done through uh, the oxy shift uh, curves. Okay, so if, for example, you take uh, different species, you, cultiv you cultivate independently into, into different medium, but uh, with two different resources, and you can actually have uh, a, an idea of the velocity of, uh, of adaptation for, for each of the species. So I think that uh, basically this was, I mean, this is the main. Uh, uh, suggestion here. So to, to have a, a model which parameter can actually be measured in the lab. So in this, in this way, you can actually perform first experiment with only single species and then try to see when you put together, if you when you put together, you have an expectation of what is going to happen. And so test uh, maybe basically the, the, the mechanism that you are think are important. Okay, so that's what we have done in the experiment. Uh, with, uh, with, uh, with Leonardo, where basically we have, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, cultivate, uh, uh, yes, so we have basically cultivate uh, two strains and one of the strains was producing basically useless proteins, so was allocating protein in, 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 in not useful for, for the resources, for the medium in which uh, the species grows. And in fact, we saw that uh, this uh, leads to a competitive advantage in a quantitative way as expected by the model. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you. Okay. I don't think I see any other no. question. Uh, so if that's the case, thank you again, Samir. Uh, okay, thank you. Very interesting research talk. Thank and, you very much. Uh, Hello. And have a good continuation. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Bye bye. We will uh, have the next lecture in about uh, 10 minutes. So everybody can take a break. Bye. Bye.